temperature wise 50s by now uh, 22nd of March you saw these hives last Wednesday before last when we did our pre-inspection um, you know drones are going to be hatching now they were all under cap then uh, it's it's time uh, we're, we're gonna make a split I'm gonna show you how I make a split I'm gonna kind of talk to you a little bit about my method during and after we do this uh, naturally we're gonna film it you're gonna see it all take place I have got a deep hive body I've set it beside the hive this is going to be the donor we're going to split from I have a moving robbing screen installed on the front of this box. I have it all shut down. The bees that I put in this box have only one, one option, stay or fly out. If they fly out, that's fine. They're gonna return back here. I have frames of drawn comb that I've stored over winter I, under Paramoth. I have took, taken these out. I've let them air out there's no odor on them now they'll be perfectly fine why I have these in the box is not because the bees I'm moving need extra comb uh, these bees will actually be producing their comb with the feed that I'll put on them uh, after I get them situated and where they're going these frames are here to go back in place of the frames and bees that I take from the donor and place into the hive body I have an inner cover ready. What I hope to do is catch the queen in a clip. This is a queen clip. Um, I'll, I'll catch her in this. I'll know where that queen is at while I'm picking and choosing which frames I want to send. I'll lay her probably over here She'll be perfectly fine. She's in the sunshine. Like I said, our temp's just on a steady increase right now. My outer cover is close by. It's important that you have these items that you're using at arm's length. Um, these bees should be relatively calm this morning. We do have a southwesterly, east, east to west wind. Uh, the wind chill's not a big deal. When we find the queen, the goal is, I hope, to catch her, the frame I catch her from is suspect to have the freshest eggs. Um, that's not to say there's not gonna be fresh eggs on other frames. But in my mind, when I find her, that's, that's the frame that's suspect to have her freshest eggs. We're gonna catch her, remove her from that frame. I want that frame to stay. Um, if, if you're not real comfortable with, well, I don't remember which frame it was, and, and there's an importance to this. I'm not comfortable with remembering which frame that was <clears throat> nine days from now. Have a Sharpie ready in your pocket. Put an X on top of that frame, representing, showing you that you have left it. You've determined that's the one you want the sales on. Put it back in, do your pick and choose. Remember, the queen's over here. So, so now you're not worrying about crushing, killing, or injuring her. You do your pick and choose. You're gonna see all this. You do your pick and choose. You replace frames that you've taken out and you push all this together. Put your empty comb to the outside of the inhabited brood bees honey pollen that you're leaving. Um, I mentioned nine days. In nine days, you will return to this hive. If it takes them 24 hours to respond to being queenless, within five days they have made their decision on, on an egg and they have started its preparation to be a queen. At nine days, that queen cell should be completely drawn and have a cap on it with a viable queen growing inside. From nine to 15, 16 days, that queen will emerge. At this point, you have left this queen cell. Uh, the only thing you would have done at day nine, besides determining you've got that cell, is remove all of the other cells save two. You're gonna leave a, a buffer cell. 
in, in case one were to be a dud. Um, you know, the, the age old thought is that first emergent queen will kill the secondary queen sometimes in the cell, or if they hatch kind of at the same time, there may be a battle one will win. These are virgin queens at this point. They have to fly. They mate, they return. Once they've mated, they're mated for life. That will be 15 to 20 drones. We've waited this long to do this, and we could run across a swarm cell already. These bees have been condensed, so if we do, I'll show you what we're gonna do and we'll deal with that then. Um, I brought a frame perch with me today. This is my second set of hands. When I open this up, I'm going to remove a frame and give me room to work in this hive without having everything setting out, stacked out uh, in the wind. So it's, it's important that you have these things available and ready for you. So let's go ahead. What I, what I, what I want to do is when we left this particular queen, she was in this bottom box and she's under this queen excluder. There's things up here that I may want to know about and check on and, and, and we will. But our goal today is to make this split. At the end of this split, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what I did if I feel like I forgot to inform you of something. Um, secondly, now what do we do with our split? So let's just get right into this and split these bees. Okay, in our absence, the drone brood. We talked about it hatching, some of it hatching. We talked about what was gonna happen. This is, this is a drone that was produced, came out of cappings. This is a drone, new drone came out of the cappings. Um, these bees, if you'll notice, here's the drone and half, half a body. Honey bees do not want these corpses inside the hive. They're gonna rot, the bees know it, they're gonna stink. These are new new drones, okay, that, that have not gotten a chance to fly. But they get them out, they take care of this, and there won't be that many of them that, uh, that perished up here in the box. Okay, so we've created us some room. We've got them exposed. <clears throat> Lots of bees, as we already knew, was gonna be here. We're gonna install our second set of hands. Give them a little more, a little more warning here that we really need them to do what we want them to do. We're gonna get a frame up out of here to work with. This is gonna provide our space. Okay, of course you want to check it. Looks like this is honey. Some fresh nectar being put back, but for the most part, it's uncapped honey resources that they're utilizing. So I'm, I'm for sure in my mind, there's no queen on that frame. I'm gonna put it here on the perch up against <clears throat> the wall of the box. Winds this way, so 
so they're good we're going to make room now and we're going to hunt for mama i'm going to move this frame to here and this frame to here we'll go ahead and pull that one and check it we're into the brood immediately lots and lots of capped okay I see capped on the one that I slid over we'll just go ahead and get back up and look at it None of this is a, a none of this is a time concern. Don't rush. Make it easy on yourself. Be sitting brood. This frame, as y'all already picked it out, I'm sure there's cups that have started. Mass of drone brood laid up down here on the bottom uh, these are the cells these are the kind of frames you don't really want to see that's a secondary patch of brood they've built off you can see the cavi <coughs> cavity down in behind it that queen can be down in behind that um, we're going to go ahead and move this over and go forward if i cannot find her this will be a good suspect frame to come back and look and at that point we'll blow in under that comb and run those bees out from under there. They've had a lot of bees hatch since we were here last. And I'm waiting for my uh, awesome videographer to pick her off here for me. I'm looking. That's a drone. And you'll notice now, you'll notice now the influx of drones. Went from couldn't hardly find a drone and lots of drones under cap to now that challenge. Yep, yeah, you're absolutely right. Now the challenge of drones everywhere. Is that McQueen? Is that McQueen? Nope. Another drone. That's all good. Jason's picked her off. He's got her located. We're going to go ahead and clip her. When I say that, we're not clipping her like that sounds. We're going to catch her. Kind of got myself shaded here. All right, Mama's in the clip. Gather up the other bees with her. Not a problem. In fact, that's a good, a good buffer for her. We don't want to injure her. She's right there at the end of my thumb. Okay, we're going to set her here in the sunshine. 
we're going to look at this frame she come off of. What did we decide we were going to do? This frame happened to say CBS on top of it. I, I, I hope I can remember that. We're going to leave this frame. It's, it's my suspect, and I can see them down in the cell. I've got eggs. This, this will be my frame that I'm going to come back to in nine days. It stays, and I'm going to leave it exactly where it was. And now, I'm, gonna, I'm going to pick and choose what I want. <clears throat> this frame of bees is loaded with honey and bees. They're, they're, this is probably actually in-house work bees. This is mostly just a food source. I would love to send one of them with these bees also. And when I say these bees, it's my split bees. But it really isn't a must due to the fact that I'm going to feed them. I'm going to put a feeder on them. They're going to be, they're going to be well taken care of. So here's a frame of pollen. They've got it over here against the, the wall. Capped, uncapped honey and pollen. So let's move back to where we found the first brood. That would be... This frame is an awesome loaded frame of bees, brood. So we're sending that one with the queen. I'm going to give her a replacement comb in that location. I know what you're thinking because I just thought it myself. <clears throat> I'm going to put this brood all back together. Everything we're leaving is going to be bunched, the empty stuff on the sides. All right. Frame of capped brood and bees. Back up to this one. Brood, hatching brood, and a lot of drones. Jason, here's the while we got this here, and the sun's just really making them pop. You see the eggs in the bottoms of the drone cells? That little grain of rice laying right, let me get out of your way. That little grain of rice laying right there in the bottom that bee just crawled over. That's about a two-day-old egg it has laid down. And when she drops them, they're standing straight up. I see it. Okay, so this has got drones. I don't necessarily need to move any drones, but it's got a lot of good brood with it. I'm going to see if I can take one more good frame of... capped brood right here oh yeah this will be a great one to send lots of bees a lot of, of, of bees that have been they're in here becoming good field bees see how quickly they move to the the comb that I had in the box. You, now already, I know what you're thinking. You're already saying it. Well, you just took bees back out of the box. That's okay. CBS. We're leaving CBS. Nice frame of, nice frame of brood. Pollen, that one goes.
I want it to be over here. Okay, that's getting getting to be pretty strong on what we're taking. I'd like to take a minimum of four. Let's see what this one has on it. Okay, you don't completely want to annihilate these bees of brood or resources. There's no capped brood here. But there is pollen and, and resource. Remember, we've got a frame hanging there with a frame almost full of honey. Pollen and resources. So we've got four strong frames of bees and brood. We've got bees and brood left. We've got our frame determined where the cells are most likely to be drawn. This is emerging and oncoming. We're going to, I think, quit right here at a four frame. So, we're going to do a four frame split. We're going to give them comb. We're going to condense these resources. This was a frame that we left. Don't forget, brood stays together. These are frames that I'm giving them. This is a frame that they already had with honey. They get it back. When you're running nine frames, did you feel that? <laughs> oh, you got stuck again. <laughs> no, I didn't. Never just grab that, that stinger. It's got that sack on top of it. And it's, it, that's where the problem lies. It's got that poison sack still just getting it. Okay. Um, we've given, we've taken. Now, comb. They get the comb back. We owe them some comb. We're going to give her back some bees. Usually a sharp wrap will take care of the majority of them. Okay. All right, we, we have taken all the resource we're going to take from that that deep body. We know where our cells are going to be. What we saw was cups. That's fine. If they've got one started, then they're just ahead of me. So, absolutely not a problem. I'm going to put this back into play. Sometimes, by the way, sometimes a virgin queen will return to this box and come in and shoot straight upstairs. It happens. So, just be, be aware of that. Um, what you're going to see now is I still want some more resources. I want to populate this box with some more bees. 
So we're going to go ahead and put this back on top. We're going to take the shallow off that y'all saw me add the other day. It's actually got a little weight to it. We're going to go back to here. Jason, if you'll come around here, we're going to raise this box like we did before. Our thoughts are she hasn't been up here since we did that inspection, right? So let's see if they turned anything in, in their haste into a swarm cell. And I'm going to say they did not unless it's up high. Here's a cup. Nothing in it. Okay, so it looks like from under here I can pull these outside frames maybe, maybe that fourth in, and I'll show you why I'm going to pull them. I need bees. At this very particular point in time, I need some more bees. Fourth frame, I think I said. I would say judging by the number of bees that's on it, they're still hatching brood up here. Yep. Okay, here, here's, here's our boys. Black drones. And you'll see them range, gold, black. None, none the difference, they're still drones. A lot of these bees, as you can tell, have hatched gone through the queen excluder working just like we want it to work i want some of these bees to go jason are you ready that frame will reload right there these bees will settle in there's a percentage that are gonna fly right back up into this, this box, but they're going to, they'll equalize. Nice frame of honey. Okay, we got, we got bees and I'm, I'm quite certain we've got plenty of them. Especially with the amount of brood that we put in there. We've got, the important thing is, every frame that I moved that had brood had enough bees that if we get a temperature fallout, those bees can, can thicken up on the frames of brood and keep that brood warm allowing these foragers and other bees that are here to continue doing their job um, we're, we're we're almost there we have almost completed this task i want to now get mama she's ready she's ready to get back in that box where it's warm she's right here Okay, there she is. Put, put me in, coach. We're closed in the front. We've got bees here that are, that are going to start responding to, we've got all this brood, but where's mama? So you're gonna watch the release here. We're going, we want her to walk down into that hive. She's coming around on Jason's side. She just released, she's in. Okay, y'all just walked through a split with me. That is a box with a 
overwintered queen. There's four frames of cap brood, pollen, nectar, eggs, I'm sure, up to emerging bees. This is going to make a great split, okay? I want to talk to you a little bit as I button these bees up. I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're going to do with that box of bees. It's cool this morning. There's, there's no worries of me overheating those bees in the box. These bees have plenty of honey up top. I could have taken that frame of honey below but you know the truth is these bees that are producing a queen need more resources than these bees who have a queen now she in her mind has formed she's left the bees have gone with her these bees in this box understand a decline in population um, what I want to explain to you a little bit now is, and it, rather than going, okay, we're done, good luck, we're going to tell you, you just watched all that. I don't think that I missed a step that you either didn't see or I explained. Here's our split. We got bees in the box with a queen. This is a new colony of bees. You've got three or four choices, and if you ask 10 beekeepers, you're gonna get about 12 different replies. That's perfectly fine. Everybody does this different, people. There's not a, there's not a set flip to page nine, step by step. Um, you're gonna get a method that works for you, and when it starts working, you're continually going to be tweaking and making uh, just little, steps to improve, make your time better, make it faster, make it more efficient. Here, here it is. You've made your split. What are we gonna do with them? We could leave these bees right here on the stand, slide the mother hive to the end position of the stand replace our split with that. Allow them to stay locked up for three hours or so. Start opening the gates on the moving robbing. These bees that are in the field respond to location. When they come back in, they're gonna continue, continue to come to the location, not necessarily this hive. These bees are all still family right now. They all still smell the same. They all know her smell. Um, that's one way. So that will equalize. That will help you with some of your drift. Drift is when you've got this box open and these bees go out to forage and return back to here. Okay? So there's an option. You could turn this box 180 on the end put the opening the opposite direction and open them up, but you're going to get drift. The, these bees will now leave and when they come back, being this close proximity, they're gonna, they're gonna come back to their hive most of the time. You'll, you'll knock some of that down by having opposite facing entrances, okay? Another option is we, we pick this hive up and we carry it, and we pick up our split, and we carry it 80 yards, or we carry it back here on the back 80. Um, we set it down, we open it up. When we open it up, we're going to force these bees to reorientate to this hive's location. By doing that, we would, we would open these gates up and we would affix this brush over the entrance so that when 
they start out of this box, they're picking their way through this, this greenery. They're picking their way through this. What we're doing by that is we're making them reset. By the time they pick out through this, they're understanding it. This is not the way it started this morning. I'm going to have to relocate to the sun and, and the coordinates of this new location so that when I leave here, I can come back and find it. You leave this on the remainder of the day allowing that to be a problem for them, making them understand they've moved. Y'all got to get this new location down. Um, another thing that can be done, you can, if you have another yard, if you have another property, if you have a just a friend who doesn't mind you bringing this box of bees, uh, you would take it to that location that location, if, if you go back through all the beekeepers answers, is gonna be about three miles from here. You go to, to said location if you can find it, set the bees out, open them up, put feed on them. Seven days later, you can bring those bees right back to your apiary and set them down where you want them. Um, these will, all these things will work. The last mention of the further the move you make, the better your response you get to the bees becoming that tight knit colony and staying put. The closer you stay to the donor hive, the more drift that we're going to get. Bees, go, foragers that I've shaken into this box coming and going back in. Um, unless you do some of these tips to prevent it. Um, I hope that I have said this where it's understandable. I hope, I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jason has filmed it where you've seen it. Um, we appreciate y'all's comments on these videos. We do our very best to get y'all answered. Um, like I said, this is my method of splitting. It doesn't make it to be the 100% right way only. There's a lot of great ways to do it. I'm not gonna go into all that today. Uh, just want you to know how much we do appreciate y'all watching us, subscribing, and liking what we're doing. We thank you very much, and until we see you again, roll that beautiful bee footage. Have a great day.